we'd been in hot pursuit of one of my favorite techniques for claw hammer banjo called the Galax Lick. I think of the Galax Lick as a pretty broad family of techniques and I wanted to show you some different forms of it today on Banjo Quest. All tab for this lesson is available for subscribers over on Patreon. If you want my taxonomy of the Galax Lick, hop on over there, the link is in the description below. This is not going to be an exhaustive accounting of all of the permutations possible within the Galax Lick family. Rather, this is sort of broad stroke. We're gonna talk about four basic categories of the Galax Lick and how they work and how you can deploy them in your own playing. A Galax Lick to me is defined by two elements. The first element is an arpeggio of some kind, so a series, a cluster of notes. And then on the other side, the second rule of the Galax Lick is that it has to put the fifth string on a downbeat, which is very unusual for Clawhammer. As we discussed last time, the fifth string is usually on the ands of a typical beat or measure. And the Galax Lick manages to invert the Clawhammer stroke so that the fifth string happens on the downbeat. This is so cool for so many reasons. One is that it's an exciting way to disrupt the basic patterns of your right hand, your striking hand, that creates a lot of rhythmic interest in your playing. But the other thing is that it sort of shows you the inner workings of claw hammer in a deep way, I think. Once you get a handle on the Galax Lick, it sort of expands how you understand the scaffolding that supports the system of claw hammer banjo. All right, so with our definitions out of the way, let's look at four different types of the Galax Lick. All right, the first category is the one that I probably use the most, and that is a triplet Galax Lick. This has a triplet arpeggio followed by a fifth string strike or multiple fifth string strikes on the downbeat of the measure. So we looked at that last time. That's simply a triplet da in context often preceded by an alternate string pull-off, though it doesn't have to be. So the triplet is essential for that, as is that fifth string on the downbeat. There are lots of variations of the triplet Galax Lick that you can mess around with in your own playing. It's kind of cool to think about this. We can add or subtract notes, we can do an alternate string pull off following the Galax Lick. We can even add a slide. So let me just show you what those look like. So this was in our arrangement of Forky Deer recently. And what's cool about this is we have our Aspo Tripolita. Then we fire off a Aspo, an alternate string pull off with the left hand, and that inverts the claw hammer stroke back to normal. So our next stroke is a downstroke on the downbeat. This is super cool. The Galax Lick puts the fifth string on the downbeat for one beat. And then with this alternate string pull off following it, it flips it back to normal. Super cool. All right, another one that I hear often with the triplet is we pair the triplet with a slide. This is especially common on fretless. Very common in round peak where the slide happens during the fanning of the fifth string. It's a beautiful little technique. A tune that off the top of my head that I use this on a lot is a tune like Sally Ann. A lot of uses for that slide, it's really beautiful. Don't think of that as a different kind of Galax Lick, it's just a variation within our triplet Galax Lick. The second type of Galax Lick that I hear a lot, especially in historical players, is an eighth note Galax Lick. So instead of a triplet arpeggio preceding the fifth string strike on the downbeat, we have an eighth note pair. We live in a world as Clawhammer banjos of eighth note pairs, I think very much that claw hammer can be reduced and understood through the lens of downstrokes and upstrokes, and those are all just eighth note pairs. So this is very convenient. It, it fits right in with our normal hearing of what the claw hammer stroke does. So check this out. This is a really beautiful, elegant, simple way to deploy a Galax Lick. We're gonna start with our same alternate string pull off, and then I simply do my arpeggio, and then a fanning of the fifth string. All together, that sounds like. Again. This is 
great for beginners who are trying to get their heads around the triplet. The triplet, remember, is a series of three notes in the time space of two. So an eighth note triplet is three notes in the space of two eighth notes. Kind of a weird concept for a beginner to get their head around. If you don't wanna worry about that, if you wanna throw or wait on that triplet, throw it aside for a while, you can reduce the Galax Lick to an eighth note pattern. It sounds really beautiful. The other benefit of this style of Galax Lick, other than it being sort of cleaner and more linear sounding, is that it's spacious. If you wanna give your music some space, some real openness, this is how to do it. A lot of the round peak players would play this. One of my favorite contemporary players who does this a lot is Riley Boggess. He uses this two stroke, this eighth note pair, Galax Lick. And what this does, the other thing it does is it makes it more subtle than the normal triplet. So it doesn't call attention to itself. It integrates itself in the normal flow of the eighth note patterns. So as a claw hammer player, you may want to use this instead if your arrangements call for something a little bit more clean and simple and spacious. Now let's listen to what the eighth note pattern can do. This is a cool permutation of the eighth note pattern Galax Like, Check this out. Again, up to speed. There are lots of little things you can do with this. You can stack them back to back like that and it creates this sort of tumbling eighth note pattern that doesn't feel all that different from your normal eighth notes. It's kind of disguised in this really cool way. It doesn't sound like a Galax Lick, does it? But it is because it's still inverting the claw hammer stroke and putting the fist string on the down stroke. So I qualify this as a Galax Lick. Our third category of the Galax Lick is probably not thought of by many people as a Galax Lick, but I'm including it because I think it is, because it has the arpeggio portion and it is inverting the claw hammer stroke and putting the fist string on the downbeat. Clarence Ashley playing the Cuckoo Bird made this move very famous. This is four notes, so 16th notes really, if you think about it, a 16th note arpeggio followed by a single strike on the fist string. If you listen to the very famous recording, the Cuckoo Bird, you're gonna hear this over and over again. It's the defining Cuckoo Bird sound. And I wanna show you how that works today. I'm going to play it in D, we're in D, and then I will quickly tune this to sawmill and you can hear how that sounds there. All right, here we go. All right, let's hear it in the context of sawmill. Very famous example of the Galax Lick. Now, a lot of people think of that as a brush stroke, but I am hearing, when I hear Clarence Ashley play it, I'm hearing an arpeggiated sound coming from that beginning stroke. So it puts that in the category for the Galax Lick for me. Again, that fist string is happening on the downbeat every single time. It's a beautiful inversion of the claw hammer stroke, one of the most striking historical examples that I can name of a Galax Lick in full force brought to bear on a tune. The trick here is to sort of straddle the line between brush and arpeggio. So we don't want to brush. That, that's too easy, it's too sloppy. It's definitely not how Clarence Ashley plays it, at least to my ears. So you've got to separate the sounds of those strings and you're looking for that 16th note sound because we're squeezing four notes into the space of two. So to play the Ashley Galax Lick well, I add a little bit of tension to my hand. I do this for all the Galax Licks, by the way. I add a little bit of tension to my striking finger, just a little bit so I have a firm surface with which to rake through each individual string. That gets me a more arpeggiated sound. You don't want this. You're leaving so much on the table if you do that, if you just convert it to a brush. So make sure. So listen for that articulated sound you get as you push through those strings. Keep a little bit of tension in that striking finger and you will get it. All right, the last category of Galax Lick that we're gonna talk about is not really a category by itself. 
I'm calling it a category. I'm calling it the pickup category because it puts the Galax lick actually as a pickup note. It starts on the fourth beat of the preceding measure, which gives you a fifth string strike on the one of your next measure. And this is super convenient. If you need, for example, a high A on beat one of a measure, it's a very convenient way to get this is to start a Galax lick on beat four in the preceding measure, and then you'll have a beat on the one that will line up with your fifth string. It's very cool, very used all the time in, in various arrangements. I use this technique all the time. You just need to make sure that you are starting on the four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's a nice loop that you can do. A tune that I use this on is Rockingham Cindy. So I'll take it. The arpeggio is my pickup, and then I'm into the tune on the one. Up to speed. All right, so that gives you four examples of how the Galax lick can be different. There are four broad categories. Now within each one of those, there are several subcategories. Like you could make all kinds of permutations throughout that list, but this will at least get you started on how and what kind of Galax lick you choose to incorporate in your own playing. Have fun with these. Try to put these into your tunes. Here's a challenge. If you've got a tune that you use a Galax lick in regularly, can you try each one of these versions in that tune? That could give you some really cool variations for when you're playing. The other thing is a challenge that you may want to try, and we just did this on Patreon. Take a tune of yours that you've been playing that relies on the Galax lick. The cuckoo would be very interesting to do this with. Strip the Galax lick away. Take it out. Does the tune stand on its own without a certain technique? I think, I personally think, a tune should not be tied to a technique. You should be able to execute the tune without sort of a certain technique. Yes, that Clarence Ashley Galax lick in the Cuckoo is totally mind-blowing and beautiful, but it might be cool without it, or at least not have it on all the time. Can you play that A part without it, get real spacious about it, and then build it back in? In my mind, that would help the Galax lick sort of retain its special quality instead of sort of using it every single time, you could trade it in and trade it out, creates a lot of interest and depth in your arrangements. Okay, that does it for me today. I'll see you next time on Banjo Quest.